G'day travellers, welcome to my latest adventure. I'm currently in one of my all-time favourite locations, Tasmania. A place you can still find untouched wilderness. A place you can still go fishing and actually catch fish. I'm starting my journey on Bruni Island, a short trip south of Hobart. Bruni is a great little getaway, and if you visit, make sure you check out the rare albino wallabies that frequent the caravan park end of Adventure Bay. Anyway, enough from me. I want to introduce you to a local family and one of the best tourism operators I've ever met. So say hello to Rob Pennicott and his artist wife, Mache. I think Bruni is the sort of place that anyone would visit and say that you're really lucky to live on Bruni Island. But when it comes down to it, I think if you took nine out of ten people and put them here to live, they'd actually find it a little bit difficult. But for that one out of ten person who really is passionate about living here, it is absolutely beautiful. We're on tank water down here, so we rely on rain, but we get double the rainfall of Hobart, which is about 40 inches a year we get here, which is really good. To get power on, normal power as in telegraph wires, um, it did mean that we were going to have to spend about $180,000 to get power on. So that wasn't something that we could possibly think about. So instead we've invested in solar panel, I really value the fact that I can bring my children up somewhere where they can have experiences that are real, about the real environment, about real nature, and to me that's what the real world is about. Yeah, you know, the country and Bruni Island, it's, it's just what they make of it, and they, 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 they find their own toys in nature, and to me that's a really valuable experience. I mean, I love the fact that the kids can just go down on the beach, like literally five minutes ago, I was down on the beach with the kids and Mia was, you know, digging around in the rocks, smashing rocks um, to get oysters out and she, she will eat dozens of them and she has done ever since she was a little child. Mm. Within a mile of where we live, we've got oysters, mussels, scallops, 12 different types of fish, crayfish, abalone. It's quite funny, when, when we need fish for tea, Michelle will actually say, don't go and catch fish. She'll actually say what sort of fish she'd like us to catch for tea. So it's a bit of a challenge, but usually I get back with what she's after. My experience on Bruni Island has been um, about being lured by the dramatic sort of aspects of Bruni Island. I mean, there's amazing cliffs that kind of soar into blue sky. And then there's also those really intricate sort of aspects of nature that also really inspire me. You know, just the, the details on, on, a, on a shell or, you know, the, the altering light of, of um, the evening. I've skippered boats since I was 12. As soon as I turned 17 I got a fishing licence and then I fished for many years um, after that until about seven years ago when I started the business that I'm in now which is Bruni Island Charters and so instead of catching fish now I catch people so it's along the same lines and yeah it's pretty good fun. When I was fishing I used to set nets and um, you'd leave the net set for a couple of hours to hope, hopefully catch fish but these things called seals would often come along and when they did they'd grab the fish out of the nets and also rip the nets apart and so it's nice to make some money out of the seals now instead of them costing me a lot of money. And I think Bruni Island is just that, you know, it really typifies that, that, that way that you can be so removed and, and feel like you really are in wilderness as much as there is these days. And yet, literally in an hour and a half, um, you can be in Hobart. When you're on Bruni Island, it's well worth visiting this memorial to Truganini, who was, when she died in 1876, believed to be the last full-blooded Tasmanian Aborigine. Her story is quite a sad one. When she was 17, she saw her mother stabbed, stabbed to death by some men from a whaling ship. Two of her sisters were kidnapped by sealers and her fiancé on a, a boat trip from the mainland Tasmania to Bruni Island was uh, thrown out of the boat by timber cutters and when he tried to climb back in, 
had his hands cut off and drowned. And Truga Nini saw all this, and then she was raped repeatedly by the woodcutters. She had a brother who was murdered, a stepmother who was kidnapped, and towards the end of her life, she is fearful that because she was seen as one of the last of the tribe, her body would be cut up and mutilated by scientists when she died. Sure enough, when she did die at 64 in 1876, her body was exhumed two years later and her skeleton was put up in display in a museum. But there is some good, good news to this really sad story. A hundred years after her death, this memorial was made and her ashes were, her cremated ashes were set adrift on the, the boat trip between Bruni and mainland Tasmania where her first love was murdered.